Welcome back to Candy's Classic Game Shrine, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Dude, That Was a Game? On today's episode, we're going to cover a game called Marble Madness. Now, I'll give you a quick rundown. It was released in 1984 for the arcade, but today's version that I'm reviewing is the 1989 version for the NES. It was capable of up to two players, and it was an arcade-type game published by Milton Bradley and Rare Limited, and as you'll see on the main title screen, Atari slash Tengen. Now Tengen, let's get off on a little sidetrack here, is the other name that Atari used to publish games without violating the terms of Nintendo's seal of quality contract. Because they were only allowed to release certain games and a certain amount of games per year. This was their way around it. Now, like I said, this is the, uh, the game originally came out in 1984 and was an arcade cabinet, and the arcade cabinet had a trackball where you would steer a marble through various obstacle courses and mazes. The game was a lot of fun, at the time it was new, and it was a damn good challenging way to eat up all your quarters. Now fast forward to 1989, though this game had become ported to your NES, and it was, you know, good, it was also really, really challenging and really good at eating up your thumbs. And you'll see as I explain in a bit. Marvel Madness for the NES is actually a longtime favorite title of mine, and uh, my all-time favorite is actually the one that was featured in last episode's The Adventures of Lolo. And uh, it, Marvel Madness, all in all, is a short game with only six levels, but I sure as hell never saw the last level until now, and I'm damn near 30. So 20 plus years of trying to beat it, and only now, for this video, haven't I been able to do it. Okay, okay, so I used a Game Genie code for the very last level to freeze the time, but shh, no one needs to know that. Shit's hard. I'd like to see you guys try it. <laughs> but anyway, the game, like I said, consists of six different levels, but each time you beat it, the next level's difficulty ramps right up. Each level has its own silly tagline, with one of my favorites being Everything you knew is wrong, which is the second to last level in the game. Some of the obstacles you face are walls, vacuums, acid or piss puddles as I thought they were as a kid, moldy slinkies, I don't know what they are again, that was something I thought they were as a kid, and even your own rival marble, the black marble. He tries to knock you off and he's a real fucking dick. But you can beat him, is if you knock him off hit him a couple times, he'll crack. <clears throat> Throughout your journeys, through the mazes and levels, you'll have a time limit that you have to race to beat. The more time on the clock you have when you finish, the more time gets added on to the next level so you have more time to complete it. You can also get additional time from a magic wand thingy that pops up, although I'm not sure how to specifically trigger that event. No idea. Now, as far as the music goes in this game, it borders on terrifying and creepy. The sound effects are pretty good, but the shrieks of the marble and the music... As a kid, I always found it so evil-sounding and so foreboding, and even today, it's creepy as hell. But it's I like it. It's kind of funky. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys like it? When I was a kid, this stuff would give me nightmares. I know, go ahead, laugh at me. But I was only like three or four at the time, so... Little things gave me nightmares. <clears throat> now, as far as the controls go in this game... Uh... <laughs> they're not fantastic. You can choose between 90 degrees and 45 degrees upon beginning the game. Now... It's kind of like your game A and your game B with your old classic NES games, where game A would be the more easy game, game B would be the more difficult. So 90 degrees is the easier game, and I highly recommend only playing on that because 45 degrees is damn near broken as fuck for an NES controller. I mean, sure if you had a trackball it'd be nice, or maybe even a joystick, maybe the NES advantage would work well, but 
I've always played this with a controller, and you need to play it on 90 degrees. No if, ands, or buts, unless you're some, like, cyborg genius at playing this game. Now, you can play multiplayer with this game, like I said before, and as a old-school trademark of Rares, at least that I've noticed, is that their multiplayer games allow you to play simultaneously on the screen at the same time. RC Pro-Am 2 is just like this, and it makes the racing element even more fun when you're racing against your buddy to see who's going to be there first to get the best time bonus. But, um, it's pretty fun, but finding someone to play with you might be difficult because I don't know many people that are into this game or these types of games. Now, besides the arcade and the NES versions, uh, the game also was ported to various different platforms like the Game Boy, that came out in 1991, the Game Boy Color had a port, the Game Boy Advance had a port, the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive had a port, the Amiga, the Apple II, and even the Commodore, just to name a few consoles, actually had it ported. And I think even in later time you can find it on mobile games, which is kind of crazy that it survived this long without such a rich legacy like Mario and the previous games. But it just goes to show you that sometimes these obscure little gems last, and while the new installments may not be fantastic, the original is where it's at. If you guys would like to try it, like I said, you have various platforms to try it on. Let me know if you guys have played this before, or if you enjoyed it from your, you know, if you just recently played it. This is pretty much it, guys. I've beaten the game. It took me long enough. Trust me, I edited it out about 40 minutes worth of dying and shrieking. But I hope you all enjoyed it, and I hope this opens you up to a new game, which is the whole purpose of this series. But with that said, everybody, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to keep up to date with my things. Till next time, this is Candy's Classic Game Shrine.